Hello my viewers. Before I get started, I want to do a shout out to Country Comes to Town. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. And of course, I want to give a special shout out to my wife, Dearest Becky. In case if some of you have not seen her channel yet, uh, check it out, would you please? And another thing before I forget, if you'd like to send me a message, it's much better if you just private message me. Uh, of course, you know, you can leave comments like you usually do on my videos. That's really, really nice, and I can, I usually get back to you on that as well. But if you have a question that you don't want the world to see you ask me, it's best to private message me. Also, I've noticed I do get a lot of questions of people asking me on my main channel page. If you'd like for me to respond to your questions, please private message me because it's a lot easier for me to uh, reply. A lot of times, I mean, days will go by and without uh, that I won't even look at those comments that, that people post on my uh, main channel. Plus, I'm not really sure about where you want me to post the answer to your questions. So, like I said, just it's much better for me if you just private message me. Okay, now and on with the show. I have here three different thermal expansion valves. Each one of them are basically the same type. The biggest difference is the size. This one right here is actually for a 30 ton air conditioning system. Okay, this is the largest one that I have right here. Okay, the next size up that I have to show you is for an 11 ton air conditioning system. Okay, and the smallest one I have here is actually for a 4 ton air conditioning system. Now, <clears throat> Like I said, they're they're all about the same, okay? Uh, the biggest difference here is with the size, the capacity, uh, the amount of BTUs of cooling or you know heating that it will provide. For example, let's look at the outside of this four ton right now, okay? We have the power head. That's this thing right here in the top and there's some information that's printed directly on the power head that is usually pretty pertinent anytime you need to replace it okay uh, this one right here is telling you that of course it's uh, for a four ton okay uh, and GA means for air conditioning now uh, also, it tells you that it's for R22 or R407C. Those two refrigerants are, will work with this uh, power head. On this power head, you see, is this bulb. This bulb gets strapped to the suction line. This particular thermal expansion valve is externally equalize that's what this tubing right here is okay this tube will uh, uh, this capped right now with a cap you know just to keep crud out of it but this tube will get connected to a tube which is connected to the uh, suction line and it's like this for any externally equalized expansion valve the other thing here we have is this side is where the refrigerant will go in to the expansion valve and then this side is where the refrigerant will come out and go into the evaporator right here and of course these are capped right now as well to keep trash out or moisture whatever and a lot of times like these are sporlin valves by the way that I'm showing you that's the brand name 
uh, they'll show you where the in is. It'll say in. Um, and of course they usually won't say out, but I mean if you can't figure out that if this says in that this should be out then I mean there's I'll just let it go at that. Now of course let's take a look at this larger thermal expansion valve. Um, naturally this one um, is for a 30 ton air conditioning system. This as well is externally equalized. So this is where the copper tubing going to the suction line would actually be brazed in place. You see this this particular expansion valve is is a sweat type where you have to braze it in. If you have to braze this expansion valve in, you're much better off just to tear it apart like I'm going to do right now rather than like what they say here, let me show you something. Uh, right here in the instructions it says caution when soldering or brazing uh, valve wrap with wet cloth to protect internal parts okay um, what I like to do though instead of wrapping it I, I always would much prefer to just take it apart. It's not that big of a deal and you know that way too you don't have to worry about any problems. Now this one, see this power head by the way is filled with a refrigerant that's different than the refrigerant that this particular uh, expansion valve is rated for. Uh, and it's this the refrigerant is inside of this power head and it goes all the way into this bulb okay like I said before the bulb is gets strapped to the suction line now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, let me go ahead and undo well I'll first I'll undo the cap uh, from around the stem okay and then I'll remove this part them okay and it's a good idea to kind of remember how this goes back together again when you do take it apart okay uh, now right here I'll set this part down the body that's what that this is this is a body and here we have some parts with nylon seals that would become damaged if they were to become overly heated. Uh, so that's another reason why it's a good idea to actually just take it apart uh, when you have to braze the body in place. Also inside of here there's a spring okay and um, on this other side there's a, a stem that it's an adjusting stem so that you can make adjustments to the flow of refrigerant that goes through the expansion valve. Next we'll look at the body and in the, bo the body still has a couple more parts on the inside here that we'll remove. Okay, what you have here is a pin. I'll try to take it out here from... <laughs> come on. Um, let's be stubborn. There it goes. Okay. Um, now this pin, of course, has a spring right here. And uh, now I think, let's see, we have all the parts out of this expansion valve. And it can pretty much safely be uh, brazed in place. But you know what? It's still a good idea to wrap it either way. Wrap it in, in wet with a wet cloth or some sort of heat sink. So now with this pin, okay, that actually goes in here, okay, which I'll put back now. Well, first let's look at this. Now this pin has a spring on it, see, so that the pin can adjust the floor refrigerant 
All right, we'll go ahead and put this pin back inside and uh, yeah, sometimes they can be fun to you know put back together again especially if you have to do this upside down it's, it's even more fun um, it's not nearly as much fun just like this but <laughs> if you had to do it like this it's loads of fun and especially in a cramped uh, area like underneath of a chiller or something um, now okay now I have the pin in there and the next item that would go back in there of course would be this part right here with the nylon seals goes right in there like that okay because you see that pin I'll show you see when uh, when I press on this see that pin Okay, we'll go up and down. Also, we have a spring here that fits right in there. And this is the stem. So we'll put all this back together. See, the reality is, though, it's, it's actually a lot easier to put everything together here first. And then you can, much easier much easier just to put it back together again like this okay and then once you see and now here's the pin right here the way this works is that this pin will move up and down according to what's going on in in with this power head because the refrigerant inside this power head will make this part move up and down according to the temperature that it's picking up from the suction line. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and put the power head back on. Okay, now what I like to do though just to uh, not damage the inside of this power head is I'll back off this uh, stem here and that will allow me to put the power head back on much better and tighter and that way the pin doesn't scratch up the brass inside of the power head once I have the power head tight then I can tighten uh, the uh, stem on to the body also um, after I think that I have the uh, uh, expansion valve adjusted the way I need it according to the amount of superheat that's uh, going across the evaporator then I can put the cap on and tighten that alright here we go it's all back together again